so this morning on one accord, let us worship together. Let us lift sounds of praise and adoration and love for our God. Let the Lord hear you this morning. Release a sound in this place of worship. Release a sound of praise. Release a sound. Release a sound. Tell the Lord that you love him. Tell the Lord, thank you. This is your time right now. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time to praise. This is your time to worship. Let the Lord hear your voice. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify your name. God, we have gathered here on one accord, God, under one heart, one mind. Together, Father, with one voice, we raise a shout in this place. Hallelujah. Father, we magnify your name. Father, we lift the name of Jesus in this place. Jesus, we lift the name of Jesus in this place. We shift this atmosphere, shift this atmosphere, calling out the name of Jesus. Jesus, Lord, our Savior. Jesus, our healer. Jesus, our deliverer. Father, we thank you this morning. Father, we worship you this morning. God, it's all about you, Father. And Father, we stand here together. Together, God, in one accord, telling you to have your way. Have your way, God. Save us again, God. Make us new again, God. Create clean hearts in us again, God. Do it again, God. Father, do it again. Do it again, God. And Father, we stand bowed before you this morning. On bended knees, God, telling you to have your way, Father. God, take my heart. It's yours, Father. Take my mind, God. It's yours, Father. Father, take my tongue. It's yours, God. Speak what you will speak through me, Father. Father, let me be used by you, God. God, my life is yours, God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's bust the walls in this place this morning. Bust the walls in this place this morning with your praise, with your worship. Let him hear you. He's worthy. He is worthy. God is worthy of every praise that we could possibly give. Let him hear you this morning. It is he who brought you where it came from. It is he that's going to take you into your tomorrow. It is he. It is he that lights the path. It is he that splits every seat before you. It is he that crushes and moves every mountain in your way. Let him hear you this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy of every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. praise. Don't be counted among those that let a rock cry out for them. But let it be your testimony this morning that no rock will cry out for you. So open your mouth this morning and let God hear you this morning. Let God know that you're thankful. Let God know that you love him. Express, express it to him this morning. Let your praise be your testimony. Let your worship be your testimony this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We're shifting. We're shifting. We're shifting the atmosphere with our praise. We're shifting the atmosphere with our worship. Shift. Ha. Shift everything that needs to be moved. In the name of Jesus, we declare it. Shift it right now. Everything that's been standing in your way, we're declaring it. Moved right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, you have control of this atmosphere. Father, you have control of every atmosphere watching online in every home right now. We declare peace in every home. Father, let your presence be felt wherever we are, in our homes, God, in our car, Father. Father, we open ourselves up to you this morning for another experience, a greater experience. Save us again, God. Change us again, God. Make us new again, Father. Father, have your way. Let him hear you this morning. 
Let him hear you this morning. We're shifting, shifting the atmosphere with our praise. We're shifting the atmosphere with our worship. God told us in the word. He told us in the word that he's given us all things. What we loose, he will loose. What we bind, heaven binds. So right now, with your words, with your praise, with your worship, shift, shift it all right now. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place, God. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place, God. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place, God. God, it is in your presence that we find everything that we need. So, Father, with open hearts, God, we yield ourselves before you. On bended knees, God. Father, have your way in this place. Have your way in this service, God. Father, give us a brand new experience of just how great and powerful you are this morning, God. Let every mind be open. Let every heart be open, God. Father, let your word fall. Let your word shift. Let your word straighten everything that's crooked in us this morning, God. And Father, we bless your name. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we love you. We worship you. We lift our hands to you this morning, God. Father, we lift our hands to you this morning, God. We cover the woman of God coming with the word this morning, Father. We cover her right now in the name of Jesus. Anything, anything that's trying to hinder has been removed. The word in her belly shall come forth. The word in her belly shall change, shall renew, shall inspire. The word in her belly. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the word. For it is the word of God that strengthens us. It is the word of God that builds us. It is the word of God that makes us new. It is the word of God that directs us to and fro. It is the word of God that we can't live without. So Father, we thank you for your word. Hallelujah, lift your voices, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. Father, we reverence you. Hallelujah, you're so worthy. Hallelujah. We lift our voices in adoration. We lift our voices in gratitude. We lift our voices in true reverence for a true and living God. We lift our voices. Hallelujah. Father, you're worthy. Father, you're worthy. Yes, uh, Father, you're worthy. Yes, God. We honor you. We honor your presence in this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, God is in the midst. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence, God. We lift our hands, we honor your presence, we lift our hands, we worship you God, we lift our hands, we reverence your glory, yes God, Father you're worthy, yes you are. We lift our hands, we worship you, God. Mm. We lift our hands, we honor your presence. We lift our hands, 
and reverence your glory. Yes, God. Father, you're worthy. <laughs> Father, you're worthy. Father, you're worthy. Worthy at all times, worthy at all times, hallelujah, worthy of the glory, worthy of the honor, worthy of the praise, Father, you're worthy, Father, you're worthy, Father, you're worthy. Yeah, God. So I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. Jesus, I've tasted your goodness. I trust in your promise. So I'm going to wait on you. Hey God, I'm going to wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. Trust in your promise So I'm gonna wait on you I'm gonna wait on you Yeah, God I've tasted your goodness And trust in your promise So I'm gonna wait on you Yeah, yeah I'm gonna wait on you My God I've tasted your goodness
voices. You should put a praise on it right there. Hallelujah. If you don't mind waiting, if you don't mind waiting, hallelujah. If you know that there's something promising in the wait, hallelujah. There's something God is doing while you're waiting. Hallelujah. He's making some great moves while you're waiting. If you don't mind waiting, I dare you to lift your voice and say, God, I'll wait. Hallelujah. Because I know what's on the other side is going to be better than what's being. Come on, if you don't mind waiting, I dare you to just lift up a praise. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him in advance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. They that wait on the Lord shall renew, renew their strength. They shall mount up upon wings like an eagle and they'll soar. They shall run. Mount up 
upon wings like an eagle and they'll soar. We're gonna soar. We're gonna soar. <laughs> We're gonna soar. We're gonna soar. We're rising above everything. We're gonna soar. We're gonna soar. We're gonna soar. We're gonna soar. They shall mount up. They shall mount up. My God. They shall mount up. Ooh. Here God. They shall mount up. Here God. They shall mount up. They shall mount up, yeah. They shall mount up. One more time. They shall mount up. They shall mount up up on wings like an eagle and then soar. That's what happens when you wait. That's what happens when you wait. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting, oh, Jesus. Mm. I don't mind waiting, Jesus. I don't mind waiting. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't. I don't mind waiting. That's where I find my strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind waiting. That's where I can hear clearly. I don't mind waiting. That's where peace comes in. I don't mind waiting. When you wait, that's what happens when you wait. God will renew your strength. God will renew your strength. I will restore your joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God will give you peace. It's in the way. Yeah, it's in the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can we just bless God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's in the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. For a spirit of patience. A spirit of patience. Hallelujah. We bless God. Yeah. Hallelujah. For a mind to wait on God. To not move ahead of him. Hallelujah, to not get frustrated in the wait. Hallelujah, God, but thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. Hallelujah, thank you for peace, God. We thank you. Hallelujah, there's something profound about waiting on you, God. That means we trust you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We trust you, God. Hey. does all things well he does all things well so we don't mind waiting whatever your will is whatever your will is whatever your plan is God yes, we don't mind waiting glory he does all things well so we, if I have to wait I'll wait in humility I'll wait in patience hallelujah I'll wait with anticipation 
anticipation, with great expectation. I'll wait, God. I'll wait, God. Hey! Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you to keep that same level of excitement as we prepare to hear the preached word of God on today. As the woman of God prepares to come, I want you to have that same expectation, hallelujah, that you've been waiting for this word on today. That you've been waiting for God to send a rhema word, hallelujah, for you for this very day, for this very hour that's going to shift the trajectory of your life. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, put some anticipation and expectation in the atmosphere as the woman of God comes to bring the word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
We don't have to wait till Sunday to praise Him. We praise Him all week long. But we can be in some situations where our praise is a little stifled. Like at work, we have to go outside. And I don't know why we don't take the opportunity when we come into the house of God to praise God how we feel it. I just don't know why when it's conducive to praise God in the house of God that we got to come and say, let everything. around when you get home. We're not going to say that because I didn't reveal that. But when you praise, it makes you feel better to know that everything is okay. It's going, if it's not okay, it will be. It may not be right now, but it will be okay. Because I just gave God all that I had. Everything that I had. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to tell you, it's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord on today. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be with the men and women of the gospel on the house of the Lord today. Excuse my voice. I'm a little hoarse. From Friday night, Lord Jesus, I thought about what uh, the prophecy that apostle gave me. I said, okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, I had to preach Friday night, but I thank God. Amen for what he's doing. I'm a yielded vessel unto the Lord. Yielded vessel unto the Lord. It's an honor to be in the house of the Lord today. At first, I honor God. Jesus, in the presence of the Holy Spirit that's in this place. We honor you, God. I thank God for Apostle Vaughn and Apostle C. Amen. We thank God for the leader. Amen. Let's give God a praise for the leaders of impact. We thank God for them. Amen. All that they are in, in pouring out, even to us, amen. And when I mean us, to the world, to the nation, amen. Not just here in Goldsboro locally, but all over. We thank God for the man and the woman of God. I thank God for this series, amen, of honor and favor. And Apostle Vaughn, he walked on through the first Sunday. I said, "Woo, couldn't be here. My husband had to preach in um, Washington. And then Prophet Jay, she walked on through. I said, oh, God, they stuck me right in the middle. They stuck me right in the middle. I said, they sandwiched me together. But I thank God for what God has said thus far unto us. We thank God for Impact Goldsboro, those that are here. We thank God for Facebook Live, Impact Global being with us. We thank God for you, you and you. I'm honored to have my husband with me today. Amen. Amen. I love you. I thank God for you. I thank God that I'm able to be who I am because of him. Amen. He makes it easy for me to serve the Lord. You, you better know who you're marrying. 
they can make it difficult for you to serve the Lord. But I'm I'm thankful that He makes it make it easy for me to serve Him. Amen. And I got some uh, some of the women that I mean people. I'm I'm honored to have people that see enough in me that come want to hear me minister the Word of God. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Once in my life, once in my life, I was concentrated on who left. But God told me to concentrate on who is left. So I thank God for those that are left. Amen. Amen. I love you, ladies. Amen. I thank God for you, every each and every one of you. Thank God for the prayers. Amen. And we are here to do what thus said the Lord. Amen. And we are in a series of honor and favor. And I thought about it, and I prayed about it, and I said, God, we are honoring the woman of God, of course, Apostle C. But you can't honor her without honoring the Lord, right? And as we honor her, we have to receive what God is saying to her for us. As when Prophet Jay was talking about the unleashing, I was looking on, on the computer, and I received that for me. Amen, the word of the Lord for me. Amen, because when God speaks a thing, if you grab it, and you get to take hold to it. It's yours. You take ownership of that thing for your life. Amen. And I, I thought about Apostle C. And I thought about the things that she has accomplished. And I said, Lord, I just want, because if you have, as women, we carry things and we've been through things and, and the seasons that we go through. And I just want to encourage her. I just want to encourage her. Because a lot of times when you finish that journey, you're weak. Because you have fought so hard and so long, you're weak. And God said, send her an, an encouraging word today. And as I send it to her, I'm sending it to her, all of us. And I know the month of May was, is Mother's Day. Uh, Mother's Day was last week. And we know we focus on the mother, but we mothers, but we know that the word doesn't have a gender. So it's male and female, right? We're sons. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to take it for all of us. And, and, and I know the men are going to say, well, wait a minute now. You said all that, but look what you're going to preach about. But what um, God has given me, all of us can give birth. We are just blessed to give birth in the natural and the spiritual. But all of us are birthing, men and women. Amen. So 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, glory. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, God. Woo. We're going to go to the second chapter. The key verse is the ninth verse. But we'll talk about the whole chapter. And we, we're, we're staying in the vein of, of honor and, and, and favor. But I wanted to throw this out there. The, the subject is the prepared place. The prepared place. The prepared place. These first five months of 2022 have been, listen, God has spoken some powerful words for 2022. And I know I'm not alone, but these first five months of 2022 has been productive and painful. Oh, yeah. It has been joyous. And some aspects has been easy and then others difficult. Everything that has taken place for our next for the next that we have been prepared for has prepared us for this place. Everything that we've gone through, it's, it's like we're being in good and bad situations at the same time. It's like God is doing awesome things, and then the enemy is coming in and doing And I said, God, what in the world? Oh, but he's preparing us, this prepared place. We're going to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. That this is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared. Oh, God. For those who love him. We're going to read that again. That is what the scripture means when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard. And no mind has imagined what God has prepared uh, for those who love him. We're in the prepared place. Amen. Amen. And prepared, we're going we're gonna to do definitions. I love definitions. And it's not that we don't know them, but I think it just reminds us. It gives us a clear image of what God is saying. So prepare means to make ready beforehand. Oh, God. To make ready beforehand. Be, before the world begins, 
before the foundation of the world. So the thing that he has prepared for us that we can't see or hear or imagine was beforehand. Way before your mother and father got together. Oh, God. Way before they hooked up. <laughs> Way before. Way before then, this was prepared. And also, we're going to deal with the whole chapter of, of Corinthians, but we're going to go to 10 and 16. But I wanted to um, articulate that after conversion, before conversion, we, we have ungenerated ears and eyes. We can't hear what the Spirit says to us. It's after conversion that we're able to articulate some of the things that the Spirit has prepared for us beforehand. But the thing about it is, he didn't let us in on everything. He shows us bits and pieces. Oh, God. He don't let you in on everything. He give you a word. Amen. But he don't let you know how that word going to play out before you get to it. My God. He tell you that you're, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, but you don't know the middle of that word. You don't know the ups and downs, the, the lefts, the rights, the ins and outs of that word. Because if we would, a lot of us would be like, Lord, I'll pass on this word. I, I think you might have another word for me. This right here ain't going to be, you know, because you know, we're still in the fleshly body. He know he can only show us bits and pieces because we can't contain all the glory of God if he was to show it to us at one time. We can't contain it. I know we think we great. I, I know we think that he speaks to only us. I know. I know we do. I know we do. Yes, sir. I know we do. But there's some things that God has hidden, Ugh. even from the great. Oh, Jesus. There's some things that he has hidden even from the great. And I thought about Apostle C, all the things that she has accomplished, not only these past couple of years, but even through the remainder of her life, even as she looked back from the things that God has brought her to, to a prepared place. And she's not even at that place yet. Uh, there's stages, there's stages. Prepare to make ready beforehand, to make ready beforehand. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 16. We're going to read. I want to read a little bit this morning. Is that okay? Okay, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Verse 13, when, when we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using these spirit words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. <sighs> it all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. Those who are spiritual can ev evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot, e cannot be evaluated by others. For who, who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows even to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. So we have to stay in that place of the mind of Christ even to be able to receive and articulate the things that God is trying to tell us about our prepared place. God said, so let's break it down. Let's break it down with the woman, with the woman getting pregnant. Amen. We're going we're gonna to talk about that a little bit. And men, stay with us. Stay with us. Don't, don't look in the natural. We know you can't have them naturally. But just, just, just walk with me in the spirit. Can you do that? Walk with me in the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And I said, God, just I like for God to make things plain to me. I like for him to break it down to me so I can understand and walk this word. Not so where, where I can live it every day, where I can connect it to something that I've experienced where I can walk through. And being that I've experienced having a daughter, amen, I can walk through this. Now, initially, whenever God gives us a word, he connected with, with, with the word. That's, we, we know the word. Okay, and just like a woman having a baby, she go to the doctor, and that's when she finds out that she's pregnant, initially. Okay, so she doesn't know. In the beginning, the man and the woman, they got together. Then she went to the doctor, and she found out she's pregnant. Now, new mothers, those of you that's mothers, you're excited. 
And some people have a, a, a difficult time bearing children. So, of course, that they're excited. Everybody can't bear natural children, but they can adopt whatsoever. But God, um, he blesses that as well. But you're excited about this new life. You know, you're, you're excited that God finally has blessed you with a baby. You got this word, and you're excited about this word that God has given you. You, you, you know, you're leaping, you, you're, you're praying, you, you're reading your Bible, you're, 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 you're studying your Bible. Amen. And you're doing the things. And then initially, you're excited about the new life. And then the initial doctor visits come. Amen. We're going to walk through becoming pregnant. The, the doctor visits come. Now, your first doctor visit is when they tell you when the baby's due. When they give you a date, they give you the date that, that they say, but we know God has that date, right? Right? So walk with me. They give you that due date. They give you some prenatal vitamins. Tell you to take care of yourself. They say exercise, move as much as you can. Don't sit down. Do the baby need movement? And then they may even put you on some dietary restrictions. It depends on what's going on. It depends on, <clears throat> excuse me, what's going on with your body already. Amen. That's the knowing. So when God gives you this, this word, when, when, when you come into the knowledge of God and he tells you these things about you that he's going to do for your life, that's the knowing of that thing. Y'all with me? Okay. Now we know. Now we know in part. We don't know all, but we know in part. Apostle C knew in part, but she didn't know all. Okay. And then we're excited. We start preparing for the arrival. We start telling our family members. That we're pregnant, we're going to have a baby. We start telling our co-workers that we're pregnant, we're going to have our close friends and families. Now, we don't tell everybody initially because they tell you initially, you know, don't spread it out because things can happen. So you tell those that's close to you, the words that God has given you. You tell those you know praying with you. You tell the intercessors. You tell those that, that you know that's going to help you birth this baby. All right, all right. Y'all got that, okay. All right, you tell those, you tell those close friends and family members. And excitement get in the air for family members, just especially for first-time grandmothers and grandfathers. Oh, God, it gets so excited. Excitement get all in the air. When you run and tell them the things that God is going to do through you, they get excited. They start, they start telling you the things that God has shown them about you. They get excitement in the air. Then you start making room for the baby. Oh, God. You start preparing the room, your house. Well, do we need to move? Is this house big enough? For the addition. So if it's big enough, if I have an extra room, so, so honey, we got to change this room because this is where the baby going to go. Help us, Jesus. We got to change this room because this is where the baby going to go. You start making room for this baby. You start making room for this word. And then you get back to work and, and, and you tell them today and you're going to have to take FMLA. Uh -huh. You're going to have to take leave. You're going to have to let them know early. You got to do all the paperwork. You got to put the paperwork in and tell them the expected date of, of the baby's arrival so that can be approved. Then you start by when you go in the store, you used to go in your section, but now you go in the baby section. Oh, God, help me. Holy Ghost. Woo, you start walking and going in the baby set and picking up little items you get for the baby. That's what you're doing for your word. See, at first when God told you to work, you didn't know exactly what you were. But when he showed you who you are, then you started preparing. You started doing things, certain things that connected with you caught your eye. And those are things you started doing. Woo, Jesus. You started buying baby items for the baby. And then they tell you to pack a bag, and you need to pack it early because you never know. You know, I pack mine real early. So you pack your bag of those essential items. So when you went to the doctor, that that bag would be ready. Now, it ain't at the door yet, but it's packed. It's probably in your room somewhere in the closet. But you already packed it. Don't throw your little stuff in there. Uh-huh. Yes, you done packed your bag. You're ready. You're ready. You're ready. Yes, God. Hallelujah. The word that he's giving you, you're packing your bag. You're doing the things that you need to do to prepare for this word. And then you and your spouse have a conversation. Are we going to know? the gender of the baby or we're going to wait for it to be revealed at the end you know do you want to know or do you want to wait do it doesn't matter do it matter do it matter to you you start buying all yellow if you decide not to know the gender of the baby now if you find out the gender of the baby you'll buy blue right if it's a boy you'll buy pink if it's a girl we're in preparation mode oh god we're preparing for this arrival so in the spirit we're preparing apostle c was a preparing for this arrival Amen. Whenever uh, y'all were together, I remember you told us when y'all um, was dating, amen, and she got saved, there were certain things that she said, I can't do no more. She was preparing for this arrival. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There were certain places she didn't go anymore. She was preparing for this arrival. Yes, God. Hallelujah. You're preparing. That's your preparing. You're preparing. And here comes the process. Oh, Jesus. It was good up to here. 
Everybody was excited. You, your parents, your family. Oh, everybody happy. You got every day you looked in the mirror, see if you had a little book. Every day, Lord, Lord, you walk by a mirror, you stop. See a little book. Lord, you poke it all out. Yeah, see a little book. Walk by the mirror. Okay. Here's the process. As the birth became closer. Amen. That shape, that that girlish figure that you want to have. <laughs> you start losing it. Honey, you don't see that shape no more. Amen. Amen. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. You don't, you don't have to walk by the mirror. Now you walk by the mirror and you turn another way. Because everything is out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless his holy name. Yes, sir. We're preparing. We're in process. We're in process. As the baby gets closer, then different body parts start swelling. Your feet, your hands, you know, just things just get all out of, oh, God. Your nose, you get all, I believe your ears and everything swell up. Your eyelashes, everything change. Everything just start getting all out of whack. Different body parts start swelling. Now, this is the process when you're excited, and now you're starting to get weak a little bit. You start going through things. Things start to get difficult, amen, amen. And I know she went to school. She went to get her bachelor's, and she started, and and, and after she finished, I know she was excited, but when she jumped into that mess that first week, she probably said, oh, Lord, I don't know about this. Should I have done it right now? Should I have waited? Did I need a few more weeks? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the process. That's the process of what God is doing for you. That word that he's telling you when you were excited, but when the hard things come, oh, God, when the trials start coming, amen, when the tribulations start coming, when it don't quite look like what he, what he said, you have to remember what you saw and not what you see. Hallelujah. You have to remember that because when it get hard, you get blinded. So you have to go back to what you saw and not what you're seeing now. Hallelujah. That's the process. That's the pro you, you start losing your comfort. Your comfort level was good. You used to could get out of the chair without nobody helping. And then your wife, your husband got to help. Whoever knew you got to help you up out of the chair because everything's getting comfortable. You need more help. You ask for more help. Sister, the prayer warrior, the intercessors got to pump it up for you right now because you're weak. You, you, you're calling your intercessors. You're texting your intercessors. Pray for me. You know, I, I got exams, I got, I got tests, things like this are going on, Apostle C. Things like this are going on. Just keep me in your prayers. This word that God has given you, this place that he has shown you that you're going to get through, this process that you're in now. Help us, God. <clears throat> Daily activities become harder to accomplish. At one time, it was easy. At one time, it was easy. One time, you could go down and pray, and God just give you, you know, it's like he would give you words for free, wouldn't he, charge? I mean, he, time you get down there and pray, he was just throwing words at, out at you. Then you had to stay down there a little longer, and sometimes you were down there, you were like, Lord, where are you? I ain't heard nothing. You ain't said nothing. I'm just going to go on what I've already heard because you quiet right now. But we all know that when we're in testing, the tester is silent. Yes, he's silent. He's silent. He's silent. When you're testing, he can't talk. You got to concentrate. You got to concentrate. Your daily activities become harder to accomplish. The intensity of the discomfort becomes annoying instead of exciting. Oh, God. One time it was exciting. Now you said, no, every time somebody asks you about baby, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to have this baby. Honey, you ain't stuck in that, but I'm ready to have this baby. I'm ready to have this baby. Yeah, you excited? Yeah, honey. But I'm ready to have this baby. Honey. But at first she was, yeah, my bundle of joy. Yes, the Lord has blessed me. Honey, you don't forgot about the Lord, the joy, and the bundle. I'm ready to have this baby. Thank you, Jesus. I'm ready to have this baby. Thank you, God. And depending on, and I thought about Apostle C with this when God showed me this. He said, depending on what you're carrying, you may be out on bed rest. Uh, some of us have been on a spiritual God-ordained bed rest. Listen, but it's not stagnation, though. It's not stagnation. The baby is still growing. You said, while we're waiting, God is still moving. The baby is still forming. I thought about her with, with this surgery. She still was working. She was doing her work, but it was a God-ordained bed rest. It's still growing, it's moving, it's getting in proper alignment for birth. My God, it has to align for birth. And what the doctor does, he puts you on bed rest for different things. You, you, you could, the baby could try to come early, so he puts you on bed rest to wait to the due date. But then you could be, be um, have triplets or, or, or twins, and then he puts you on bed rest. But because she's pregnant with big, he put on bed rest. Oh, God. When you're pregnant with big, see, he'll sit you down. He'll slow stuff down for you. And I think that's where we've been. He, he slows stuff down for us. Things haven't been 
excuse me, coming together like we thought they would. They hadn't been aligning up and connected like we felt like that they should at this aligned time. So it's kind of been slow. But the thing about it is, don't get weary in well-doing. Because what it's doing, it's aligning. God is aligning that baby. The baby's still growing. It's moving. It's flipping. It's turning. It's growing. And every now and then, you'll know it by the movement in your belly. Oh, God. Every now and then, God will give you a sign, the baby will kick you. Every now and then, the baby will move or twist. And sometimes it get in that awkward position that you got to lay on one side, certain sides you can't lay on. You got to lay on certain sides. You got to walk a different way. The baby will move in. That's the process. That's the process. That's the God process. We prepared, and that's the process that he gave us. Now he's going to prepare us and reveal the truth. Because if you've ever been pregnant, you had an idea of what your baby would look like. Would he have my husband's nose? My mama's eyes? Lord, I don't want him to have them. <laughs> Ooh, I prayed that before. Yes, sir, I prayed that. I Look, don't, don't let them look like. <laughs> Y'all have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. you have this idea of how the baby should look, amen. It comes and you have this idea, and then when the baby comes, when, when God starts revealing to you the things that he has already put in you, and when the baby comes, it's so much more than what you expected. You, while the baby was growing in you, there was a love, because for me, it's an immediate love for a mother. When that seed comes, it's immediate. Even before you see the baby, it's immediate. I mean, that love comes. But when th that baby comes out and it's birth, it's a different kind of You didn't realize you could love somebody like this, a human. You didn't realize that you could love a child like this. When that baby come out, really, and the, and the head all, honey, the head be all over the place. Oh, Jesus. But they're the, they're the, I'm telling you, you, you look past that, it's the best thing. They're beautiful. Everybody think their baby is pretty, right? Right. Everybody. Yes. You think, yes, everybody. The truth being revealed, everybody. And when, when, when he brings you to this place that is revealed, and then you start looking at the different aspects of the baby. You start looking at the beauty of the baby. You start looking at the uniqueness of the baby. And it reminds you of certain people, and then certain things about the baby don't remind you of anybody because all of us are unique in our own way. God created us all different. Not one of us are the same. Even identical twins are different. They don't have the same fingerprint. We're all different. So the uniqueness of your baby, the immediate overwhelming love for the baby, in the stages of growth there was love, but after birthing, it's an indescribable love. You knew it, but this, this you were not expecting. That's when, it revealed, that's when it's revealed. Now the God, the God ordained prepared place. We are moving into the sixth month of the year. There's going to be so much more that we need to expect. Because I'm telling you, those that have waited patiently and been diligent in the hard places. Oh, God, in the tough times when you desire, you felt like giving up, but you didn't. Even if you had to come in here and you really didn't know. Sometimes you came and you said, God, I'm here. Whatever you do, you just came to be in the presence of God because it was so hard. You felt like that God was near Far from you, but he wasn't because the Bible tells us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So he's forever with us. But even though we feel like that, every pain, every disappointment, every setback that you have, everything that you had these first five months have prepared you for God's prepared place. Now, your prepared place is different than God's because it was beforehand. You prepare for this. But see, what God is going to reveal, it, he, he gave us bits and pieces, a raw, uncut version of the picture. It, you, you know how you can see, you can crack a mirror and, it's, and, and a puzzle, you have just certain ones of the puzzle, but it ain't coming together. That's how he gave it to us. Because we weren't ready for the full picture. We weren't ready for the whole picture. But as we have went through this process and, and we are told, see, certain things don't matter to us anymore. Certain things that we thought was important at one time, it's not really important anymore. When God allowed us to come back into the building 
and fellowship, those things that we thought that we had to do in services, have you noticed that we have cut all those things out and at one time you had to do them or Jesus won't in the building? You see what I'm saying? You had to. Oh, you got to do it this way. That's no. Oh, you can't leave this out. We got to operate like this. Oh, you mean to tell me that you're going to do that before this? You're going to read the scripture before you see? Oh, you can't Oh, you can't do that. We had to have everything in line. But since we've been, spirit move however you desire, whenever you desire, how long you desire. That's what's important to us. Not a formality of Christ. Not a tradition. Amen. Not a program. Let Jesus be the program. Oh, my God. Let him be the program, however he see fit to do on this Sunday. And Sundays change. Situations change. We can't come in expecting him to operate the same way. Then you're putting him in a box, and he can't go in boxes. He don't go in boxes. Who, when you're pregnant with big, God will allow you to see a version of you can handle and not the whole picture. The picture you see is raw and uncut. But can I just tell you the masterpiece, oh God, that was prepared for you. As we move, the things that we haven't, the things that haven't come to pass for years, the unfulfilled prophecies, the dreams, the visions, the things that God has shown us in the spiritual realm, God is getting ready to reveal them because we're in a God-prepared place. See, once our ears was dull, to the spirit of the Lord because we was too focused on the formality of Christ and not the identity and the relationship of Christ God told us on Friday night he said read stop reading for information but read and study for revelation and transformation a lot of times we read so we can have scriptures in our pocket to, to tell somebody that we know scripture to, to spit out scriptures as needed but when we read, we should look at ourselves. It should be a mirror for us. When I read, it should be a mirror for me. Those things in me that is not lining up, that word should be cutting. Cutting those things. Taking those things out. Putting things back in. Transformation and not just information. God is preparing us. You've been through some hard things the first five months. You've been in some hard places, some dark times, and people didn't know. You know, because we come to church, they see us, and we make it look good. We make this stuff look good, y'all. We make it look good. But it's been hard for some people. Some things have changed. The things that God showed you, it's not flowing the way you thought it should flow. It's not going the way. It hadn't opened up how you thought it should open up. Maybe people are not coming back into the house like we expected them to come back into the house. Understand? Maybe people are not serving the Lord. Even after a pandemic, you would think, even after a million, how many deaths it was? A million deaths, you would think that we would Seek out someone that knows the past, present, and the future. Not just the past and where we are now, but the one that knows the future. You would think the prepared place. And I thought about Joseph. I thought about his life, how everything he went through prepared him. At 17 years old, and that's, we get excited and we share what God gives us. That's why when I say share it only with those, the intercessors. You got the holy. You can't be so excited about what God has shown to you. There's certain people that God has connected in your life. And, and I said, and we, we encounter things that we feel like that people are not for us. That shouldn't be our focus because I am a true believer that God gave me people. Every season of my life, those that I thought was there and wasn't there, he put somebody else in there. You understand what I'm saying? He always has someone for you. Always. Always. So whatever you need, he provides for you to get to this prepared place. And I thought about Joseph, how his brothers did because of the dream. He didn't understand. He was young. He was young in the faith. He didn't know what he was sharing. And his brothers didn't know. Just, just like they were saying in the scriptures that if they did know who Jesus was, they wouldn't have crucified him. If they did know who Joseph was, they wouldn't have put him in the pit. 
but that was God's will. The pit was his will. So you may be in a pit right now, but you got to know that everything, when we are wrapped up in God, the devil can't do nothing to us. Do you know that? He can't do nothing to you. He has to get permission from your father. So if anything is attacking you, your father has said, it's okay. And if he said it's okay, that means, boo, he got me. I'm good. Oh, God, I'm good. He got me. I'm not out here by myself. He got me. And I thought about it. As Joseph went through his life, those 13 years from 17 to 30, those 13 years, every situation, when you go back and read those, those chapters, every situation that he was in, God showed him favor. I don't care where he was. From the prison to part of his house to the prison, he, God was there. It said God showed him favor. See, he was meant to rule. You know you're meant to rule when you're ruling in the prison. Come on. Jesus. Now, they don't put you in prison for so-called handling this man-woman wrong. Y'all know how it is about y'all women. Handling this man-woman wrong. And you go in the prison and start ruling in the prison. But when you know what you were born for, when you know what your destiny is, no matter where you are, God, God allows you to operate in that gift no matter what situation that you're in. Don't just wait to operate in your gift in certain areas. Let God use you in whatever area, situation you're in to operate in that gift. Apostle, Apostle C. Apostle C, she went through things, things that I don't know. And some things I'm sure that her husband knows a lot of them, but some things she may have not share with anybody but God. The years. And I thought about it, all 13 years. And I'm telling y'all, y'all know we spoil and God don't come about three days. I'm about... Pastor Dill said, wait on the Lord about three days, honey. Because y'all know we got, we got it down for the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. About three days, if he don't come, we look. God, where you at? Where you at? About three days. We give God about three days. We might give him a week. But honey, by the weekend, by Sunday morning. Jesus. He was third, a three-year difference. A three-year difference. And I'm closing. 13 years. He walked through this. And everywhere he went, he honored God. When they came to him for the dreams, he said, only God knows. But do you know that God has prepared you to be an answer for somebody? He prepared Joseph to be an answer. Joseph was an answer. Wherever he was, God used him as an answer. He was there to interpret dreams. He gave him an answer. And even when the cupbearer forgot him, let me encourage you and remind you that God never forgets. People will, but God don't. He do not forget. He told the cupbearer, remember me, that cupbearer got up in there with that king. He ain't thought about Joseph. I said, God will make the people around you dumb so you can be the answer. They went to the astrologers. They could not even interpret the dream. He would dumb people down because you the answer. You got to know what God's doing in your life. Don't be afraid to be the answer. Some of y'all been walking away because you're the answer. God, I don't, you're the answer for somebody. You're the answer. Joseph was the answer. Wherever he was, God used him as the answer. And see, the thing about it is, we, we're, we're the answer for, for nations. When God used him, he, it was he, him, God used him that the people wouldn't die and, and, and perish. But even his family, the same family, oh God, the same family that betrayed him. That's why we can't hold grudges. That's why we got to get this stuff out of our heart. We can't hold grudges. We got to get it out of our heart. Because God going to use you for those same people that put you in the pit. Those same people. And some of them saw the hand of God on your life and they allowed jealousy to rise up in them. Uh-huh. Those same people. He's going to use you to bring all of those people out. He's, you are. Tell yourself, I am somebody's answer.
I'm sure when Apostle C started this road in the kingdom, she didn't realize fully who she was. And I'm sure that she didn't realize that she would be the answer for so many men and women. A lot of us are here today because she said yes to be the answer. Yeah. 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 A lot of us because she said yes to be the answer. And I'm going to read this scripture, Genesis 50 and 20. Joseph told his brothers, and this is where we got to get to, y'all. And I'm learning. I'm learning. This is where we got to get to. He told his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for my good. He brought me to this position so I can save the lives of many people. Some of us may be in that bed rest stage and you're getting a little antsy. Because you feel like God is not moving as quickly as you feel like that he should. Some of us are still up in the comfortable stage. But the place is being prepared for you. This is a place that you know not of. Because if you look back on your life to this point in time, you didn't really realize you were going to be who you are right now. When I look back on my life, when I look back on my life, and when I say, I do it individually, when you look back, I say, God, I never thought I would be who I am. Never. The things that you went through when the enemy desired to kill you before you acknowledged Christ as your Savior, he couldn't. He couldn't do it because God has a prepared place because those people that you are called to, you are their answer. You're their answer. So be encouraged. The enemy can't kill you. Oh, God. He can't harm you. And there's so many stories and testimonies in this building. If we could pass a mic around, to tell the things just a, 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 a little bit of what God has done. It will, we will blow each other's minds about where we've been through. Even the things that we did to harm ourselves. We Look, not only the enemy, sometimes we put it on the enemy. Look, I can't even kill me. Because sometimes I am the enemy. Understand? Sometimes we are the enemy in our life. Oh God. We are. But he can't accomplish. He has to get permission. So as you're sitting, as you're watching on Facebook, as you're reminiscing over your life and you're thinking about where you are now, and you may have been in a place that you was, right, you was thinking, God, okay, well, maybe this is not what you said to me. Maybe what I heard, I heard it wrong. Maybe what I said, I need to go a different way. No, you, you're on the right path. You're in the process. You're, and see, the thing about it is, it get the hardest when you're right at the edge. Oh, when you're right there, but it seems so far away. Seems so far away. I'm going to make it personal. I had a dream about me and my husband. And we were climbing this hill, this, this mountain. And every time we would try to get our footing, the rocks would just, you, you know how you try to climb something, when you got your footing, you, the, it would just fall. And you, I mean, you just fall. And he would say, we need to turn back. And I said, no, babe, we keep on going. And then I would climb and I'd say, we need to turn back. He would say, no, babe, we keep, keep on going. We were encouraging one another when we got weak. And it's like God told us how to position our foot. And when we positioned our foot and moved our hand, the top was right there. And we were standing on the top. And it was a trying time for us that we was on the break of getting up. And God is just letting us know, look, you right there at the top. I know you 
are climbing and the rocks are slipping down. I know you feel like you can't get your footing. I know you realize that I've been in this place too long, but just keep going. As you move your hand to the top, you're going to be at the top. Don't give up. Just keep climbing. And as you encourage each other, God gives you that intercessor. When that person get on your mind and say, text that sister, that brother, text them and encourage them because you don't know what they're going through at that time. You could be their answer for that time. Don't give up, church. Keep moving. It's a process. Because when he get us to the prepared place, Joseph could have been arrogant when his brothers came. We know he did, but he was trying to see had their heart changed when he did the little things that he did. He was trying to see, okay, are y'all still about self? But God put us through this process so we won't get arrogant. Because when I tell you what he's going to do for us, y'all, it's going to be big. I'm telling you, it's going to be big. The little stuff that I can't eat, I can't, the stuff that I see now that God is doing is blowing my mind. So can you imagine what he is going to do in our lives? Can you imagine where he is going to take us? And how he's going to move for us? But the process, it molds us and it makes us to the men and women of God that we already were. Because see, I'm working on who I already was, not who I am. Because I was here already before the foundation of the world. I'm coming into that woman. We're in a prepared place. I just come to encourage your apostles. See, I know you're listening. Don't give up, woman of God. Every day is not going to be easy. Some days are going to be unbearable. But the God of your salvation, he's going to bring you through. He's going to bring you through. Because the thing that he's prepared for us, that God has prepared for us, we, did a, we have to do a preparing in expectation for what he's going to do. But I'm talking about the God prepared place. See, that place is already set beforehand, beforehand, beforehand. It was already set for us. So what we're doing, we're coming into that place that was already set for us. Woman of God, be encouraged. Things are not flowing like you think they should flow. Maybe they're not coming together how you think they should come together. But God said, you're in a prepared place. Keep flowing. Keep moving. And even in that season where you might be on bad rest, rest. Because he's aligning everything that need to be aligned for you. He's bringing all the people together. He's getting all the monies right to do what he need to do in your life. That's, it's going to flow. See, we can't be weary. Because what the enemy does, he's trying to take our focus. And when he takes our focus and distract us. For what God has already said, you know what he told you. That's what you stand on. Not what you see, but it's what you saw. It's going to come together. And what I love about God, all of us have something to do in here. And we don't have to compete. There's enough souls. Hear me in this place. Can you hear me in this place this morning? There's enough souls that if each one of us operated in the call, it will be full right now. It's a, we, it ain't no competition in the kingdom. We're one body. We're one body. That prepared place. That prepared place. We're waiting on God. We're waiting on you, God. Our faith, we're anticipating your move. We're in expectation of your move. And when you move, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready. Now maybe some today, because sometimes I, I, I feel like you may be in that place where you may need prayer. And apostles, okay, that you may need prayer. And God was telling us, because I think sometimes that in the past, and you can lay hands here because I know you touch and agree, but I have noticed that a lot of people will come to the altar just for the hands to be laid on them. You know, they was for somebody to lay hands. But in this season, when you come to God, ain't nobody going to have to touch you because he is. When you come with a sincere heart, he's going to touch you. 
And this move of God that's getting ready to happen on this earth, that's why he's preparing us. And I feel like he slowed us down to get us ready for what he's getting ready to do. Because I'm telling you, when it hit the earth, we're going to be in amazement. The things that we hadn't seen, in you, the healings and the miracles that's going to manifest on this earth that we have not seen in our natural eye, that I have never seen since being on this earth. The things that God is getting ready to do for us. We got to be ready. And each time, you have to go to the king. You have to go to the father. So you may be weary right now. You may be in a dark place in a hard spot because it's going to, some places are hard. Can we just not just preach this prosperity gospel? Because there's some things that's going to be hard. Jesus said, even though Jesus came to the earth, he knew his mission when he came. But when that cup came, he actually asked for the cup to pass away, even though he knew why he was here. But he also said, nevertheless, oh my. It's a the nevertheless time, y'all. If I got to drink this bitter cup, God knows I just got to drink it. Nevertheless. But if you're here, but today I want you to come and just talk to God about what you need. Talk to God where you are. Somebody needs strength for the journey. Somebody is weak. And sometimes we're weak and we don't know how to answer the call because sometimes we can walk in a spirit of pride where he, we want to look like that it's all together and we're weak and we need prayer. You may on, be on live. God is there with you as well. And he's, he hear you. He hear you. Oh God. God hears you. But this prepared place that God has set for us, it's going to be mind-blowing. It's going to be mind-boggling. So if you need help this morning, the helper is here. If that's you, then you come and you tell God about it. Because he knows everything anyway. You know, God already knows our struggles. He knows our, our, our weak areas. All we have to do is present those things to him. And he's there to give us strength. And I believe as we, the born-again believer, believers, the kingdom-minded, get in right position with God. When we get in right place, our rightful place with God, when we get authentic as apostles, when we walk in our identity that God has created us, that's when it's going to line up. And yes, we're in a new season. We're sharing things on social media, and people are coming. But we're going to come into a season where it's going to be come see a man. It's going to be the testimonies. It's going to be the testimonies of those that God has delivered and set free. Jesus would tell them when he healed them, don't go tell them, but they would run and say, come see a man. They told me all things, and it filled up the place wherever he was, and that's how it's going to be. You can use these platforms because God put them, put them there. But most of the, the things that's going to fill places and conferences, the things that God is doing, is going to be come see a man. Come see a man. Come see a man that told me all things and testify about what God is doing. You know, that's what he's saying to me. No, and, and I know certain things you can't share, but certain things as God leads you, share that, testify how he brought you out to let somebody know that you can come out too. Because people look at us in our now, they don't know half of the stuff that we've been through. They don't know the things that we've done. Share as God leads you, because sometimes he leads you to share. The prepared place. Give God a hand clap of praise. We bless the Lord. We bless you, God. Let's honor God today for his word. Let's bless God for his word. Let's thank God for his word. Lord, we bless you and we praise you for your word, God. We thank you for the place that you have prepared for us, God. 
the little bits and pieces that you're allowing us to see. We thank you, God. We thank you for every trial, God, every storm, every tribulation, every hill, God, every valley, God, every hard place, every hard thing. We thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're the great I am. There's nothing impossible for you, God. You created us in the likeness of your image, and you want to see you in us. You want to see your image in us, God, and you're preparing us for our prepared place. And we thank you today. We thank you for blessing every heart in this place, every heart that's on live, on social media. Bless God, touch God, transform. Yes, God, transform us into the people that we already were. And we honor you and give you praise. Amen. Come on, continue to praise God. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise God for the word. Praise him for the messenger. That's it. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him. Come on, praise him like you received something powerful, something good. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you, Jesus. What a word, 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 what a word. How many of you have ever found yourself or you may be in that place where she's even talked about right now that hard place that process hallelujah and I'm telling you God is right there in the midst of it I got so much out of that today and so many things that literally she spoke and things that the Holy Spirit said and I wrote some down some just basically some things just get lodged into your spirit and it's like got it and it registers immediately but I'm telling you God knows exactly what he is doing and he loves you and he is basically doing a work in you that you may not understand right now but he makes all things beautiful in his time and I'm grateful for that clap your hands and give him one more praise certainly praise God for Apostle Catherine what a word of encouragement I saw her online and she was receiving she had emojis with hands raised and everything. And I'm telling you, an exciting time for God. Listen, right now, even we thank you. There's a spirit of, of, of encouragement that's in the room. There's a spirit of healing that's here. There's a spirit of, I believe, deliverance that's here. And I believe right now, whatever you need, whatever you're believing God for, if you would just lift your hands right now. Listen, this is an act of faith. This is an act of faith. God will strengthen you. God will deliver you. God will heal you. God will bring you into a space that even in the hard place that you're in right now, it will literally be an endowment. It will be a release of oil that that will enable you to even live through what you're going through right now. You know, there have been those nights where it's like, my God, I know what you said, but God, if you could just help me to live through this night. Have you ever had those nights where you just felt like, I don't think I'm going to make it through this. And if I make it through, will I have my right mind? God, I'm about to lose my mind in this, but I hear the Lord saying that I'm releasing strength right now. You're not going to lose your mind. You're not going to lose your life. But God says, I am preparing you that even the weeping may endure for a night joy comes in the morning. And I dare you to prophesy out of your mouth that it's morning time. Yes, Come on, prophesy it's morning time. Come on, decree and declare morning time for you. Say it's morning time for me. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's morning time. It is morning time. It's time to rise up in the strength and in the might of our God. And I'm telling you, every enemy that faults you, glory to God, is going to hate the fact that it could not kill you. He could not kill you. Come on, your enemy is upset because you got up this morning. Your enemy is upset because they thought you would lose it. They thought you would die in your sleep. But God woke you up and the enemy is afraid because you are now standing in your prepared place. Come on, give God praise. Elder Katina, we thank you. Hallelujah. We praise God for you. Some say elder, some say elder, but we appreciate you. What a word, what a word right now. Word. Hallelujah. 
That's it. God is even endowing on Sister Benita this strength and encouragement. He's endowing strength. You know, you're in a hard place right now, and nobody can even, and you know, I can't imagine where you are because I, I've not lost a child. I've not lost a child, and I've not been through uh, even tragic things. But even now, God is literally, literally strengthening you. And it's okay. I even hear the Lord saying that even in your tears, I'm exchanging strength for your tears. And it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel weak. Sometimes you just got to get it out. Sometimes you just got to say, God, I cannot believe you brought me to this place. But I heard the word and the message today, even as she was preaching, he's right where you are are. And sometimes it's almost like, how did I get here? Joseph probably asked, how did I get in this pit? But God says, you're right where I am. God is there with you. And I decree and declare strength. I decree and declare that the Lord is strengthening you. I prophesy strange strength. I'm talking about a strength that will enable you to stand when there is seemingly no reason to stand. I mean, strength that will enable you to have joy when it seems like you're at your weakest. And I decree and declare the blessing of God. And I hear God saying, I got you. I got you. I hear the Lord saying, I got you. I got you. I got you. And it is okay to let those tears flow because the Lord not only knows every hair that's on our head, but he understands every tear that rolls down our cheek. And I decree and declare that the Lord is strengthening you right now. I prophesy strength to you. I prophesy strength to your family. I decree and declare that God will not only just give you strength, but he will give you purpose and understanding. There are things that sometimes frustrate us because we don't understand. I think the thing that hurts us the most is, God, I don't understand. And this is why the scripture says, in all of your getting, get an understanding. And how can I understand something so tragic? How can I understand this tragedy, God. But God says, I'm going to give you understanding and I'm going to help you understand that I am in the midst of even this. And though it hurts, though it's painful, though it even hurts to the core of your family, God says, I'm going to birth out of this. I heard the woman of God talking about birthing pains. And sometimes before God brings forth something amazing, there is a painful experience. And I decree and declare that even in this, God is going to bring forth something amazing. God is going to give you not only understanding, but but revelation, and I prophesy now in Jesus' name the strength of God, the might of God. I prophesy the might and the strength of an ox. The Spirit of God even now strengthens you, and your knees shall not buckle, but you shall stand strong even in this. And what the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn it and work it for your good in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to help her be encouraged today. I don't know what it is to lose a child, more or less to tragedy and senselessness. But I know that God is able to do exceeding and abundant. He's able to do exceeding and abundant. And weeping may endure, but joy, I decree and declare, is here right now. It's here right now. Somebody give the Lord praise. Ah, I feel that in the spirit. I feel it in the spirit. I feel it in the spirit. I feel it in the spirit. Feel it in the spirit. Just worship him for a moment. Certainly praise God. We honor again the woman of God. Thank you again, Elder Katina, for just being obedient to the Lord. And I, I just sense God is releasing upon this word, even though we are here. Uh, and I love it because she bro broke it down so profoundly to help us understand that we're honoring Apostle C, but we're also speaking to the body of Christ. And I love it because one thing I have learned about God as it relates to gender, gender is for us. Heaven doesn't regard gender because if you read the scripture, God put in us all, he put us all in a skirt. Sorry, brothers. He put us in a skirt. You are bride. Hello? You're the bride of Christ. And I say that in, this, in the sense that God gave a word to us. And, and I want you to just pat yourself because you're getting ready to give birth to something great. And we receive that encouraging word. We receive it. We're not going to run and shy away from the process, but we're going to embrace it. And we're going to walk in the greatness that God has called us to. And you ought to praise him and worship him even now for the greatness that's in you. I receive that. I receive that. I sat there and said, I, you know, I... And it's, it's not easy for a, a, a real man to say it, but I said it. I said, Lord, get me pregnant with something big. Woo! So you got to learn how to operate in the spirit, right? <laughs> get me pregnant. And I know I might look like I'm really pregnant, but I'm, I'm in the gym. 
I'm going to give up my baby. I'm not playing Santa Claus this year. But God is doing something amazing. And we say to Apostle uh, Catherine, be encouraged. We certainly appreciate it. And God spoke to me and said, honor the woman of God this month because I'm going to do something in her life. But as you honor her and as my people honor her, I'm going to cause the oil and the blessing to flow off of her onto my people. God will literally send someone into your life to honor them so he can bless you. Woo! He will basically speak to you and give you the attention to place on someone else because he want to do something for you, but you got to sow it into somebody else. And today we honor the woman of God. Impact, come on, put your hands together and help me bless God for Apostle Catherine in her absence. As you were preaching, uh, Elder Katina, I literally, I mean, you were saying things and I'm like, yeah, if, if Apostle C was here and she will be back soon. You, she, she has a testimony that I'm telling you, and it's just truly a blessing, things that you just, you know, you, you, you look at people and you see what they do, their achievements, and you, you just basically say, wow. But it is, it is a fight to get into purpose. It's a fight to get into purpose. And I'm telling you, we, we, we got to learn God. When God gives you a promise, when he gives you a promise, he will place the promise right in the middle of a battle and tell you to go over to Canaan and possess what I've given to you but won't tell you but there's some giants over there <laughs> and you're going to have to fight them to get what's yours hallelujah come on look at somebody ask them do you still want it come on tell them I eat giants for breakfast that's, that's breakfast food come on I eat giants for breakfast and if I'm hungry for lunch I'm going to have a couple of more glory to God and I swallow the sons of Anak for dinner because we are well able and God will give you a purpose and a promise but he'll sit it right in the middle of a battle and you got to fight for it and that's why the scripture says contend for the faith contend for the faith so we're excited listen have your seats in the presence of the Lord we're truly thankful we serve a God who has a reckless love for us and he chases us and he fights for us and it doesn't matter what you're going through, he's right there. Listen, I'm excited about what God is doing, and we're truly blessed. I want you to prepare your hearts and minds as we continue to worship God. We're going to prepare to worship in our giving. I'm telling you, that word was amazing. And I even hear, I just hear this in the spirit. God is raising up, uh, Elder Core, he's raising up your wife and, and yourself. He's raising up a powerful couple. I, I see a power team. And it may not always be in the context of you preaching together, but the ministry that is being developed, and, and it's not even developed because you've gone through that stage. Yeah. You've gone through the developing stage. You have served. You have worked. You have done it uh, hilariously, where some people probably laughed at you. But God says even now that I am even now bringing you to the birthing stool. And something amazing. I just, in my spirit... There is something that the Holy Spirit is allowing me to sense that's something amazing about this team. And there will be things that will flow out of you. And God is, is, is pleased with you. He's pleased with your stand. He's pleased with your stance. Your marriage is a threat to, to the kingdom of hell. Hell hates your marriage. Hell hates your ministry. And there is a word that has been birthed in you both. And I see in the season to come, Yeshai, Man Sotayo, that God is getting ready to, it's, it's a curtain that's getting ready to be pulled. God is getting ready to pull the curtain. And it's not just pulling the curtain for one, but I see God pulling the curtain for both. And get yourselves ready for God says, I'm favoring you even now in the hearts of men and great men. And there will be people that you will encounter that have never met you. But when they encounter you, God says that they're going to see and understand the revelation that they have been seeing about these two people. People, and in some cases, it may be one or the other about this person. But God is revealing you to bring you into your purpose and your destiny. And the enemy thought that he had killed what God had put in you through the things that you went through. But the Lord says, no, he could not kill it because it was me. And now I'm bringing you into this season where I'm about to pull the curtain. And God says, because you're humble and because you don't want a spotlight and because you didn't ask for a stage and because you didn't ask for it God says I'm giving it to you because I can trust you with it mm, 
God says, I can trust you with it. You didn't go seeking it. You did not do what you did. You did not labor and serve for it. God says, you did what you did out of your heart. But God says, I trust you. And your humility has brought you to a place of honor and promotion. There's a promotion that's coming in the spirit realm. And when I say promotion, I'm literally talking about promotion in the, in the realm of your oil and your anointing. I know you both hear and know what God is speaking to you, but he's already elevated you in the spirit realm. Rekata, manso. And you're coming up into a place where the enemy fought like hell to keep you out of. And he has lost the battle. He has lost the battle. There is an apostolic mantle over you. There is an anointing on your life. And because of your humility, God says, I can trust you with this next place that I'm calling you to. You didn't ask for it. You didn't seek it out. You don't even need it, but you're saying yes to the will of God because you love him. And God says, because of it, I'm favoring you. And I'm pulling the curtain. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise. Some people go seeking the light. Some people go seeking the stage and the platform. But God says that the two of you have served your way faithfully. And your humility and your honor. God says, I sought you. You didn't ask and you're not asking for what I'm doing, but I'm doing it because I can trust you. And I prophesy over you now that the Lord is even now opening doors that no man can shut. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that everything that the enemy has stolen, everything that the enemy thought he did, every canker worm and palmer worm, everything that the enemy has eaten, God says that the enemy is going to have to regurgitate and give back to you double what he has caused you strong favor is hitting your life there are some things that God says that you have literally lived through and you have even allowed yourselves to just simply say listen we're going to take it because we are people of honor and you did not retaliate you did not say certain things you didn't even do certain things but you took blows you took blows that you didn't even deserve. And he said, you remind me of myself. Because Jesus committed no sin, but he bore the sins of every single one of us. And God says, because you did it with humility and you did it with honor, I'm getting ready to raise you up with favor and honor. Look what God is about to do in the spirit. And you will, you will literally, you will get so excited. And you will say, it was worth not opening my mouth to fight my enemy. Woo! Your silence was not because you were weak, but it because you trusted and you loved God. And I decree and declare apostolically over you today that the Lord is opening up doors and he has prepared a prepared place for you. You preached it for us, but you must receive it for yourself right now man and woman of God. It is the season for you. And I decree and declare favor. And I prophesy that the Lord is going to give you provision for everything that he has called you to. Everything that he's called you to do. I command favor even on the conference that's coming up. I command blessings. I command that budgets be taken care of. And that God even now, what he's birthing in you is going to be like a river of living water. And he's going to pour it out. Come on, somebody encourage them in the Lord. I bless you today. Woo! Man, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Sister Sherry, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm getting ready to sit. Let me say sit down. I'm going to pull back. You know, prophet Corey, sometimes these anointings come and you can just, you just be seeing people and just want to prophesy to everybody. Want to say, and you, and you, and you. You'd be like Oprah said, everybody gets gifts. Whew. But God is doing it. These are good people. These are good people. <laughs> Brother Core, you got the heart of gold. You got the heart of gold. 
heart of gold. Humble. Humble. Whew, Jesus. And people think humility is weak. But in all actuality, it's strength. That man right there is strong. I see it in the spirit. Your strength, your humility has basically gotten God's attention. And the thing about humility, when you understand its true meaning, is dependence upon God to the point where you'll humble yourself. You will lower yourself and allow him, as John said, I decrease so he can increase and I'm excited. Listen, we're getting ready to sow and seed. Again, we are so thankful. I just appreciate what God is doing. What an amazing, amazing month. Last week, uh, Prophet Jacqueline preached so profoundly and so powerfully. And we are back again this week. And Elder Katina has really blessed us. And I hope and pray. And I actually know, because I know my wife. I know she's encouraged. And I know, and listen, she didn't ask for this either. She And she's always the type, like, are you sure what God's saying? Because she much rather you honor somebody else. It's just, but I said, no, the Lord said, honor the woman of God. And watch what I do for this people and this house. And so we honor you, Apostle C. We appreciate you and we love you. And we're thankful for what God is doing. That's it. That's, that's it. Let them receive. God is doing it. Come on, ain't nobody in no hurry. That pot roast is fine. It's in the crock pot. It ain't going to burn. Shucks. I love it, man. She was teaching, and it's so true. You know, in ministry as visionary leaders and as pastors, you know, we have just been so, man, just pressing into God, trying to figure out how to do ministry at this point as it relates to the methodology and how to carry out the homiletics of church. And it's like, what do we do next? And there's so much stuff. It's like, forget it. Let's just do this. God have your way. And she was teaching that. I said, yeah, it's just, you know, just come in and let the Holy Spirit have his way. And I guess I said that to say this. She made reference to the fact sometimes you just forget about the time. Forget about the time. In this culture, in this culture, and she talked about the boxes. And there's, there's a study that I've been doing that I haven't really preached it. Sometimes God will just have you study stuff and won't even tell you to preach it or release you at, until a certain time. But I've been studying God and boxes, and he doesn't do boxes. He doesn't do boxes. And sometimes we try to put him in a box in the context that, you know, and there's nothing wrong with this. Don't, don't misunderstand me, and please. Uh, you know, of course, I don't get a lot of emails. No, I don't, I don't get a lot of, you know, folk, folk know I don't clap, so don't be clapping at me. But literally, you know, I don't get a lot of that. People just understand me. He's, he, he is what he is. He says what he says and does what he does. But, you know, we, we've accommodated people. So folk have gotten to this culturalistic worship of 90 minutes, and that's it. And if you go over 90 minutes, the Holy Spirit has left. And I promise you God can do it because a lot of what we have done and a lot of what was done was not as much God as we was wasting time. And I don't think it takes God to do very much of anything if he doesn't want to. But sometimes it takes us time to find the vein of God. And I believe there are, there are, there are veins and there are porters of praise and worship that we got to tap into. And, and, and wise, spirit-led, prophetic worship leaders basically know how to usher you into a vein that gets you into a flow of God. And sometimes it takes time and you can't put them in a box. So in this season, yeah, we, we're, we're doing away with things. We're doing things differently. Uh, we, we are basically, you know, uh, flowing with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I can uh, just stand here and the Holy Spirit say, just wait, just wait. I'm, I'm coming, just wait, I'm wait, wait. And what I love about God, he will show up for one person. <laughs> he will literally, God will come into a whole building full of people just for you. Just for you. Jesus went into a pool uh, where they were sick people that were waiting to get into the water and waiting for the water to be troubled. He showed up. All of those people, prophet. All of those people. And he went in and basically healed one man and left. <laughs> Come on, you ought to declare, I'm that one. I am that one. He showed up just for me. And I said all that to say this. Sometimes we just wait on the Lord. It's not that we don't know what we're doing. It's not that we just want to talk. It's not that, you know, oh, he got mycositis. He loved to talk. Now, sometimes I'm waiting on you to hush in your mind and let God have his way. Hello? Jesus discerned people's thoughts. Sometimes I can discern where people say, I want to sit down. I wish you would hush <laughs> in your head because I, I hear your mouth through your mind. That's what Jesus was saying when he discerned their thoughts. And it's not that we, because I got a whole lot of stuff to do. 
<laughs> I'm sitting here now like, I, when I get finished this, I go right back to work. You know, I do what I do. But my point is, is that waiting on the Lord. And you started that vein today, waiting on the Lord. And we got to learn to wait. So we are thankful. Listen, ah, he don't have to wait on us any longer. We're getting ready to sow and seed into the ministry, to the kingdom of God. We're again thankful for you. I'm telling you, man, I feel so empowered, so blessed, so good to have so many of you here. And I appreciate you taking time to come and just support the service as well as support the woman of God, the man of God, and certainly here to honor, again, Apostle Catherine, and we're thankful. We want to encourage you that as we prepare to sow and to give, again, we believe that tithing is something that is a part of the life and the heart of the believer. The Word of the Lord teaches us that tithe is, if you understand Scripture, it is literally, some people say, well, that is, uh, you know, of the law, and that is you know, Old Testament, et cetera, but it, it actually uh, predates law. Tithing began before the law came into, if you will, uh, existence through uh, Abraham and through Moses, shall I say, but literally God honors the tither, the giver, and I'm a believer that if we continue to tithe and as we continue to give an offering that the Lord blesses us, he opens windows, and he gives us opportunities to continue to be blessed. So we want to ask all of Impact Church Goldsboro as well as Impact Church Global that you would prepare yourself to tithe. There are four ways that we give here at Impact Church Goldsboro. And basically, we ask that you would take either one of those ways, or you can do all of them. If you want to see if they all work, you can text to give. You can go online and give. If you're here, you can give after you've done that. Uh, basically, you can use all four of those ways to give in person, online, text, or cash app. Cash app. We will receive all of those and we certainly praise God listen we take checks as well I was somewhere and I was this was a business transaction so in my business I had to write a check and it's a business check and it feels so funny writing checks because people don't do checks anymore but in my real estate company and business I don't do cash app and all that stuff you know I still do business in that context of checks but we take your checks they could be blue, green, yellow. They could be big. They could be small uh, as long as they're good. We take all color checks, all size checks, but they must be good checks, okay? What is a good check? A check that is written with the money waiting on the check to come. <laughs> <laughs> Not a check written and you got to catch it. It's like I got to beat that check before they get it. Hallelujah. Somebody say, been there, done that. Yeah, but we balling now, man. We balling. We are balling now. Come on, we balling. I'm looking at all you rich people, man. I'm telling you, I know your offering is bigger than your outfit. Hallelujah. I know your offering is bigger than your outfit. Glory to God. I'm telling you, but I'm excited about it. So we want you to prepare yourselves. We're also in the middle of a campaign. We're, we're ba basically uh, endeavoring to continue to move forward with our building project. Uh, we have acquired 22,000 square feet of uh, facility downtown. And uh, we have uh, work and there's labor that is taking place. And so we are definitely thankful for those of you who have basically partnered with us and you're giving on multiple levels. We certainly praise God for those who we have a 1010 campaign. 1010 campaign is 10 people every Sunday for 10 weeks. 10 of us and 10 people are sowing one of the three, 250, 500, or 1,000 dollars. Uh, 10 members per week. And you don't even have to be a member because some of our rich friends, glory to God, some of our rich friends and some of our friends who are just looking for opportunities to be a blessing and they just find, need something to sow into, something that they believe in and something that is uh, important to them. We are literally, we have a vision and God spoke to us and said to do what they did downtown around town. I want you to uh, purchase and I want you to begin to invest in distressed properties. And through the Redemption Buy Back and Build Up project, what we do is we buy distressed properties. We invest through building them back up and we try to facilitate needs in the community. We are so thankful. Elder Jones, raise your hand. We are uh, basically thankful. She's doing an amazing job at the Community Day Center. I'm telling you, the Community Day Center is just doing some amazing things and blessing and impacting people's lives. And so this is what the Redemption Buyback Builder Project is, is where we basically buy back property. And as they re renovated and revitalized downtown, and Goldsboro is so proud of downtown. I'm telling you, I mean, I say Goldsboro, I mean the officials, and they should be. They did a great job. We want to do that around town. We want to do what they did downtown in our neighborhoods. Because psychologically, 
when our black children wake up every morning and they have to go to school in abandoned, if you will, neighborhoods and communities, that says something to their mind psychologically and it causes them to not have a proper perspective on where they live and even their future in some cases. But when we begin to purchase and buy back, it gives us ownership. It gives us a voice. Can I tell you, in your city, if you don't have uh, the ability to say, I'm contributing to this city through taxes, you have no voice. <laughs> you have no voice. But when you are an owner, property owner, business owner, whatever the case may be, ownership is the will of God. God is invested in land. The first thing he did when he basically created man, he gave him land. Oh, hallelujah. He gave them land. When he delivered Israel out of Egypt, he, in the context of worship, land and ownership is kin to worship, to worship God the way God wants you to. He said, I got to give you your own land. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you the promised land. And so he's given us this vision. And so what we do is we sow. And so we're asking you, even visitors and those of you by way of Facebook Live, we ask that you would share in with us $250, 500 or 1000 This is beyond the tithe and the offering. And remember, there is no money shortage. I still get sometimes, man, I just like, man, God, if, he could, if I could get one wish, take me back to my days. I was, I'm telling you, y'all think Steph Curry could play. Steph Curry didn't invent the jump shot. I was doing that before they had a three-point line. I, you ain't got to say, man, because I know what I was doing. I ain't asking you if I'm right. I'm not the old Baptist preacher. Am I right about it? I know I'm right. <laughs> Come on. I was doing that. And I'm looking at these guys now in the NBA making $200 and $300 million over five and seven years and we think there's a money shortage whoo Jesus my there's no money shortage there is an idea shortage there is a confidence shortage there is a creativity shortage and I prophesy even today as you prepare to give that God will tap into your imagination open you up and help you understand that there is no shortage of money income glory to God but literally that God will cause ideas and vision to flow out of you that will produce income and wealth and I even prophesy over this people today. I'm working up in here today. I ain't studying the devil. I prophesy over you that the Lord will give you cash flow. Somebody say, what is cash flow? Cash flow is money in the bank with nothing to do. Woo, Jesus. I'm talking about your bills are paid. You ain't got no debts. There is money that is unallocated waiting for an assignment. I ain't talking about the Peter to pay Paul, Peter to Rob Peter to pay Paul mentality. I'm talking about I got $67,000 in the savings account and everything else is covered. And this is unallocated money waiting on an assignment. I, I'm, I, I don't have no car note. I ain't got no mortgage. Six hundred and seventy thousand dollars in the savings and just waiting on the Holy Ghost to say do what next make me a distributor to every good work Woo! that's it you ought to grab that come on grab that you can't have no small mind for that one come on here because he's able to do as you're able to think and I can see myself living just like that come on somebody say because I'm on my way Come on, I done sent a memo to the top and told him to ask him, what the, what's the weather like? I need to know how to dress. Why? Because I'm coming to the top. Come on. I know y'all don't have the same playlist as I have, but look, I started from the bottom, but now I'm here. Started from the bottom, but now I'm here. Woo! All right, we're going to prepare to give. We, we thank God that. Our floor attendants have already brought the gold buckets. That is what you can help us do. And we're going to facilitate ministry. We're going to facilitate schools downtown. We're believing God for uh, Kingdom Academy. Uh, several years back, I started homeschooling my, my son in his last part of his senior year. And we started uh, Kingdom Academy. And he was the only graduate, and I stopped right there. <laughs> Whew. He didn't like his teaching. I was trying to like my student. That's real. <laughs> I 
I told him, I said, just girl, you homeschool now. And just you're a senior, you homeschool. And look, we got to get some stuff done. <sighs> He's looking like I should have stayed in school. But I believe that God has given us a vision also to help in so many different ways. And, and so we want you to help us as we even uh, s- send our resources and our attention uh, to, to, to the facility downtown where we're building up and we are putting the roof on and we're getting things where we can uh, begin to facilitate. And I'm just trusting God that he's getting ready to give us uh, momentum like never before. Momentum like never before. All right. Let's stand to our feet if you have your seed. Father, we thank you for every seed. We thank you for every uh, tithe and every tither. We decree and declare your promise and your word over their lives that they will not have need for anything but your open windows. And God, you said that people will begin to look at those who tithe and they will begin to know and see that they are blessed. People will look, all nations will look at you and know that the Lord is with you. And I prophesy and I decree and declare God's favor over you through your giving. You said that if we give, it shall be given unto us. Good measure. It will be pressed down and it will be shaken together and it will run over. Will you cause other men to give unto our bosom? I prophesy to those who are business owners, entrepreneurs, those who have careers and those who are basically continuing to labor in whatever capacity. Your favor over over their lives, that Father, all of our needs are met, and just as even we spoke and we made reference that there is no shortage of money, there is no shortage in any way in the kingdom of God, and we are kingdom citizens. It is now our expectation. It is now what we believe, believe and decree will be our experience that we will live abundantly, even in our finances, in Jesus' name. And somebody say, Amen. The Bible says he loves a hilarious giver, so I'm going to ask that if the floor attendants will give you, uh, if you will, the liberty to come out if you're giving in person. If you've already given, that is fine. We certainly appreciate it. You can have your seats. But those of you who are giving in person, please come out and sow your seed. We thank you for your liberal giving. We appreciate you. I do want to make this quick announcement before we get out of here is the fact that I, I, I made reference to the Day Center, and Elder Jones has started a particular ministry and a particular, uh, I believe, powerful project where she is literally working with new converts and it's a new convert discipleship class where she's helping those who are just recently saved to understand and know the Bible and she's having a a particular Bible uh, session and where they're teaching and studying if you will the word of the Lord training new believers but she's opened that up that is not just for new converts that's for any and everyone who have a desire to grow in your walk with God and I believe sometimes we got to go back to the foundation and go back to the fundamentals so that we can basically learn the, uh, the principles of God's word so we can walk in a strong uh, walk in faith with God. So she is basically inviting any and everyone who have a desire to participate in the New Converts class. You are more than welcome. She has those every what Sunday, Elder Jones? second and fourth Saturday she has those classes and typically and generally they are right here and sometimes she's at the day center yesterday she was at the day center accommodating something that was going on here but we invite you to come and be a part listen I'm telling you I don't care how and don't think well I've been saved for 10 years or listen it doesn't matter I'm telling you it doesn't matter come and be empowered if you've been one of those who have even struggled with reading the Bible studying the Bible understanding the Bible she is doing an amazing job her and her team they basically are doing an amazing job they had that class yesterday and I looked in and I walked in and I stepped in and I saw folk who had been saved before Jesus came was there I saw Sister Gold Sister Gold's been saved since I mean before Jesus got here Sister Gold was already saved Tim married a saved woman <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, uh, Melanie's was there. I think uh, Sister Diggs, uh, Briggs, I think you was in there at one point. I mean, so you don't have to be a new convert, but you can just basically be one who's hungry. I, I, I hear this, Prophet Corey. This is something that I'm hearing, that God says that there is a hunger that's going to hit the bellies of his people for the word of God. People have been hungry for services, but not the word. It's like they love getting in a service, but there's no hunger for, for word, for scripture. And when you're hungry for Bible, you don't wait for church to get in it. But you study it, you read it. And I watch and I watch and I watch my wife. I watch other people study to get out of college. And then it's like we have no appetite to open that scripture. You got to study the Bible like your life depends on it. 
search the scripture and then get up under the word because there's something powerful about the preached word. And so we invite you and I certainly want to encourage you to tap in every second and fourth Saturday uh, at 12 o'clock noon. Powerful session and, and they're, they're doing some amazing things. So that is that. Give God another hand praise. I'm done. I am done. Now you can literally talk in your head all you want because I'm going to sit down. Uh, oh, forgot this one. Oh, man, this is going to be amazing. This is, this is uh, something that God put on the heart of, of, of Pastor Dear, and she uh, basically came, and, and I sort of conferred that, yes, this would be amazing. And so we're excited to offer uh, come, uh, let's see, May 28th at 7 p.m., we will have a night of worship, an intimate prophetic worship setting and service here honoring Apostle Catherine as well, continuing what the Holy Spirit said, honoring the woman of God, and we're going to be basically coming in worshiping and having a night of worship. Uh, there will be worship singers, leaders, music, etc., and we'll be honoring Apostle Catherine. She has some of her favorite worship songs. If you know her, she is a worshiper, and she sent Pastor Dia some songs, and we're going to basically come in, and I love it because even uh, as Pastor Dia and I talked, and one of the things that we, again, confer with the woman of God said, we basically agree when she asked me what was I seeing about the service, but we both agreed, you know, prophetic worship. Let's let the Holy Ghost have its way. So you might come in here. You might be on your face all night. You might come in here and get drunk quick in the spirit. You know, if you ever been to a good party, whatever they serving, Lord Jesus, you hang around the punch bowl. So why you ain't dancing? I, I like to be around the bowl. <laughs> I was around the bowl. I believe we're going to get drunk that night in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy, I believe we're going to get on some of that new wine, that wine of the Spirit. Woo! And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So that is May the 28th. We know that that is Memorial Day weekend, but you know, a lot of times Memorial Day weekend, and I have been one who have participated in a lot of the festivities, and then there are times when you're out and you're participating, and you know, I'm a kingdom believer, I'm, a, I'm also a pastor, and then you find yourself in the middle of participation, and then, you know, and people are doing all kinds of stuff. They're doing all kinds of dances, and it's like, well, I wanted the fellowship, but this is really not my type, because, you know, I mean, they be on the dance floor. It's like, are they in bed or on the dance floor? These dances today, they ought to just call them humping. Because that's all they do. They get out and just hump on each other, right? And so you be out in the middle of Memorial Day weekend trying to have a good time, and then you start to feel bad, and you're like, they be like, why are y'all leaving? Y'all leaving early? You're like, yeah, yeah, my spirit is getting a little vexed. You know, but it's good to see y'all. But I thought it was a great idea because there's not a lot for people who are saved. And so on that night, you know, while you out and after you're tired of being in those environments, listen, 7 o'clock, say, I'm going to run around there to see Impact them because I know that they are worshiping and they, they ain't, listen, they're not doing the dirty dance. They're doing the holy dance. They're in there worshiping. So we're going to worship that night and we're going to believe God. We ask that you would also fast and pray with us uh, for that night that the Holy Spirit will move. So we're excited. Listen, we love you. We appreciate you. Again, uh, Elder Katina, thank you. Come on, Impact. Give her a hand of encouragement. We appreciate you. We're going to continue to train. We'll continue to roll next week. We will be back next week. We'll have a special guest next week. And we also uh, will go all the way into the last month or the last week. We have five Sundays in this month. And we're excited about Pastor Carlisle, who is the pastor of Impact Church Winston-Salem telling you, you don't want to miss Pat. This is the most prolific teacher that I have ever heard. Honestly, I've heard a lot of teachers. Pastor Carla is so profound with that word. And so we look forward to him as again, next week, we look forward to our uh, always distinguished and special guests that will be with us, uh, continuing the theme, continuing the word. So that being said, until then, we do invite you to be a part of our Wednesday night Bible study setting. We call it Soul Care Wednesday, Soul Care Wednesday. And we're teaching on deliverance right now. And it was powerful this past uh, Wednesday. We had a very powerful time. Even in our discussion, we invite you out and uh, literally be empowered and impacted by the word of the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. I promise you, you're to go now. I always like to ask, who cooked? Anybody cook? It's just for my own survey. I'm just doing a little survey. Whew. Out of all these folks, three people cook. I'm telling you, I, I see a market, y'all. Y'all better go in the restaurant business. <laughs> That's what I told Apostle Calvin yesterday. We basically thank God for those of you who are sowing and seeding. Thank God. Apostle C, you have some beautiful flowers. Again, wait, she loved flowers. 
She loves flowers. And uh, uh, we're, we're, we're building a, a little area there at the house in, in, in the office, a uh, studio corner. And she's like, I need fresh flowers every week. I was like, cool, got it, fresh flowers. But literally, uh, we were out yesterday, and um, people were everywhere. We were trying to figure out what was going on. It's like, where are these people? And graduations and et cetera. But there's one place you could always count where you're going to find them. It's them restaurants. I said, I don't care what's going on. Folk going to go in the restaurant, and they're gonna, they're gonna, if they're wearing masks, they're going to lower them because they're going to chop. And so I just like to ask who's cooking and uh, just like to get that little survey in my own head and just see who's cooking. Y'all cook, cook. Come on, cook, cook, cook. I guess y'all done found out, them sisters done found out the truth, man. It ain't to his, mm -mm, you ain't going to win no man with no meal. They used to tell you the way to win a man is through his stomach. She's like, I've been feeding that joker. He ain't gave me no ring yet. I'm going to save my collars. Save my collars and my tater salad. Because <laughs> he ain't coming on that, right? All right, Father, we thank you for everything. We are even grateful for the word today. We receive it. We come in agreement with it. We ask again that you will continue to bless the woman of God and her family, the man of God. We decree and declare that even the word we receive will germinate in our heart and our spirit, and it'll bring forth fruit that shall remain for your glory. I release you today from this worship experience to go out and impact the world. Our philosophy, belief, and conviction here at Impact is we build a people so that you, the people, can go and impact the world. Wherever you are, whatever sphere you're in, be impactful. Make a difference in Jesus' name. Tell somebody about the gospel and be blessed as I pray. Listen, remember we are uh, back into somewhat normal times. You can hug if you like. You can fist bump. You can wave. Whatever it is, be safe. Some people are still social distancing themselves. Use your discretion. Thank you to all of our visitors. Please come back and worship with us again. You are free to go is our prayer. Let the church say amen. The overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It chases me down, fights till I'm found.